this video I'm going to teach you and show you how to use Microsoft Flow, uh, which is the new AI training machine learning model, um, which is really easy to use and implement. So you may have seen a video on my YouTube channel where I use Python and the Raspberry Pi 4 to recognize faces. Um, if you've looked at the code for this, you'll realize I had to train a model to build um, a mathematical model of the different faces. And then what happens is when I show uh, the computer or the camera a picture of the face, it then compares that mathematical model of the face with the um, readings that it takes from the, the, the face. So for example, I used uh, Buffy. So if I showed Spike, to the camera, it recognized obviously the picture of Spike based on the model it built. Now that was fairly simple because um, I was only using you know static pictures. Um, the challenge is obviously using something more complex, which is where we come on to Lobe. And um, if you have a look on the examples page, you can see some of the models that you can build. So you can recognize color, animals. If someone's sleeping, okay. And uh, normally, what would happen? Obviously, I use the Raspberry Pi a lot and Python. What would normally happen is it would take me a long time to create this um, this model, this AI uh, learning model. However, with Lobe, it does it very quickly. So I'm going to talk you through how to do this and uh, show you with with some examples. The first thing you want to do then is head over to Lobe. And you're going to click the download button and download and install the program. So if you want to do that now, and I've already got mine, so I'm going to load it up. Make sure I'm full power, yeah. Okay. So there is a bit of documentation, um, examples of how you can use it at Tor, etc. But we're going to jump straight in. We're going to go new project and uh, label it up here. So this one's going to be called Keyboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to train the model to recognize the Raspberry Pi keyboard. Okay, so this is the name of my project. Now what I want to do is click on Label and I want to import some images. You can do it straight from the camera or a data set, but I've actually downloaded some images of the Raspberry Pi keyboard. Here they are. So I'm going to import all these and then I need to label them. So I'm just going to call this uh, KB for keyboard. In fact, keyboard, just type in keyboard. And this helps the uh, AI or machine learning classify the item is. You can see already it's starting to guess what the item is. And there are my uh, images. So it's recognized the images. I've got six images of keyboard. Now, now what I'm going to do is take the images of myself. So I'm going to go import and I'm going to use the camera. Now because I'm already using the camera to uh, film the webcam at the bottom, I can't um, take the pictures, but it does load up a camera interface and you can take the uh, the images. Um, and you'll see here on the left hand side I've got unlabeled because I've already taken uh, seven images. So I'm going to label this one up now. So I'm just literally typing the name, pressing the tab key and it's starting to identify that it's me and so on. So now I've got 13 images altogether seven of me, six of the keyboard. And you can see here it's starting to train here. If I click on train, I think it's actually already trained it all up. And it's already predicting the images. So if I click on here, I can see this identified as Dan. Um, and it already recognizes the keyboard. Now if it didn't recognize it correctly, then I could always um, click on here and change it. So for example, if I import a different picture, so if 
if I went to media, so if I imported a picture of me with Evan, okay. You can see now it's retraining. Okay, so I'm going to open up a different image of me. I'm going to go import and I'm going to go to a uh, pitch I use on the website. I've got short hair there, so it'll be interesting to see it recognizes me. Um, then training itself and the program is trained recognizes them okay so if we go to use okay I can now drag and drop images in and um, it can see if it recognizes it so let's go to let's see if we can find another picture I'm going to go to the internet I'm going to find a picture of Raspberry keyboard Pick a random one that obviously isn't uh, already in there. Let's try that one. And um, by the way, I don't own the permission to any of these images, so they are being used for solely for the purpose of this demonstration. So I'm going to call this Pi PB. And now what I'm going to do is so drag and drop in a picture to see if it recognizes the program okay there it is at the top so if I drag that in keyboard it thinks it's a keyboard correct now just to show you this is actually working if I get a picture of a frog let's say Big frog eyes, love it. Right, let's drag big frog eyes in. <laughs> it thinks it's me. <laughs> Clearly not. No, this isn't correct. So I can click the wrong button. It's not Evan and Dan, it's not Dan. So I can rename it now. Frog. And you'll notice on the left hand side it starts training. Okay, so it's relearning the model. So 80% accuracy on all images, I'll probably need some more for that. 100% accurate on me and the frog. Keyboard needs a couple more because um, it made 12% error. Okay, so the more images you can put in at a better range, the more it will um, identify uh, what it is. You've got some errors down here because it does identify me, but I can change it to Eben and Dan. using the image of Evan and Dan yet because it thinks it's both of us. Sorry, I know it's both of us but it's obviously recognising me. And I can go through the list of images and I can change any that it doesn't recognise. So as you add more images in, it trains the model. Um, what we're ideally looking for is 100% you know, accuracy. It identifies them all now. Again, go to use, drag your pictures in, you can try it out. Now this is the really cool part is that we can press the export button and we can export the AI learning model, the mathematical model for any of these programs, which is fantastic. Um, if you are using uh, Raspberry Pi for AI, then you, you'll be using TensorFlow Lite. You can click export, go to the desktop, you can export it to there. You can optimize it. I'm just gonna export it now for the moment. And then you can integrate this model straight into your TensorLite program. So if we go to the desktop, and get rid of these little pictures now. Keyboard T for light, there it is there. Obviously the time to export it depends on how long it's taken and how many pictures you've got, etc. 
Um, we go into examples. This is really nice. We've got a nice README here. Uh, gives you a quick overview, what to do, how to set it up, which is really useful. So if I'm going straight to my Raspberry Pi now, I've got the instructions how to set this up and integrate it. I've also got the requirements which set out what I need to install on the Raspberry Pi. And then I even get an example of how to implement the code, which is really good. Uh, skeleton code showing how to load and run TensorFlow with an exported package. And now I've got my trained AI model and um, I'm ready to go. I can then use this on my Raspberry Pi. I can upload images, upload pictures, use the cam Pi camera and um, it will use my model that I built in Loeb to identify Raspberry Pi cameras. Obviously the more pictures I can get in Loeb, the better the, um, the, better the, the model becomes and the more useful. Okay, hope uh, that made sense, and um, you know, I fully recommend this. Trying it out, it's really simple, really easy. Um, really impressed with it how, how how simple it is, um, and how intuitive as well. Um, and what I'll do in the next video is talk through and uh, walk through an example of how to use this on your Raspberry Pi. Um, but yeah, try it out. Let me know how you get on, and thanks again for watching the video.